And then what happens is that food just putrefies and produces a, a diseased environment within your intestines, all right? And what your health affects your mental ability to think. So all day long, guess where your blood is? It's not in your head. It's in your stomach trying to digest food. So when the Spirit of God is trying to come to you and tell you, did you know that Jesus is getting ready to come back soon? You can't even focus. And that's why God said, listen, take heed to yourself, lest by any means your hearts would be overcharged. And the first thing he mentioned was not the cares of this life, was not drunkenness. He said, surfeiting, which means overeating. The Bible told us that would be one of the major problems in these last days in which the people of this world would be ensnared by the devil thereby being unprepared for the second coming of Christ. He said, as in the days of no, so shall it be when the Son of Man cometh. For they, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving into marriage. Notice the two things, appetite and passions. Controlled by our appetites and our passions. That's why you couldn't peel away from the Michael Jackson funeral. We're just on an emotional trip. And when I say trip, I'm, on, I'm speaking in the lines of doing LSD. We're on an emotional trip. The Bible said, take heed to yourself, lest by any means your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, which is overeating, drunkenness. How many of us get drunk and you say well this man well, well I don't drink liquor I don't even have a glass of wine there are many things that cause drunkenness I just I just want you to consider that I'm not going to jump into that too deep right now because I just I have a few other things I want to get into but do not allow this overeating, the drunkenness, and then the cares of this life. That's what happened with the majority of us the other day in the Michael Jackson scenario. It's the cares of this life, ladies and gentlemen. We're so caught up in this world. We're so caught up in every little nonsensical news, you know, uh, news story and the majority of you don't even have a five-minute relationship with God on a daily basis. And it's not even sad. It's not even funny. I'm not making a joke of this. I'm not making light of it at all. It's actually frightening. It's scary. And then we go to church, if you go to church. You go in there talking about you're going to go praise the Lord. The music's blaring, you're shouting, clapping, the person next to you falls out on the ground in convulsions. For the next 20 minutes, five people are trying to, you know, cover them with a cloth or revive them, whatever the pace may be. You go on this emotional high. Oh, you met with Jesus. Oh, you are the Holy Spirit. And then you leave from there and guess what? Nothing changed in your life. Because you're still watching same the same perverse programs on TV you're still dressing like you never know knew the name of Jesus at all let alone had a relationship with him and we're still ordering all the fears of our life as if we are more heathen than the heathen well well my family doesn't follow Jesus so I'm not going to follow Jesus um, my friends, my friends will laugh at me if I follow Jesus, so I'm not going to follow Jesus. Just following Jesus isn't cool. So forget about Jesus. Or if I follow Jesus, I won't be able to do this and do that. People are going to be lost for the most 
foolish of reasons. And what is sad is the fact that when the reality strikes them, that they are going to be lost for extremely foolish reasons, that reality will strike them when they're face to face with Jesus himself. And it's too late to make a change. Who in the world wants to find themselves in that predicament? Who in the world wants to find themselves face to face with the all-powerful God of this universe, shining in unsurpassable splendor, brighter than the sun, the ground of the earth breaking up, volcanoes bursting off, I mean just erupting, the whole earth out of commotion, and you know within the depth of your heart that you rejected the one. Whom is the reason for all of these just ad magnanimous happenings at that time? That is, I can't even fathom. And I don't even want to fathom what type of thoughts would pass through the mind of the individual that must stand face to face before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and know that during their lifetime they mocked at him. They made jokes about him. They watched shows like Family Guy that made absolute, just perverse jokes about God. About Jesus. Just mock at him. And then you have to meet him face to face. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do it to your family. Take some time to experiment with Jesus yourself. It is an experiment. Take some time. Open up a Bible. Nobody has to see you. Go close yourself up in a bathroom store. God doesn't care. He just wants to see you making that attempt. Open a Bible. And just start reading it. Pray first. Ask God to give you his Holy Spirit, to guide you into all truth, and then begin to read the scriptures. Because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. You cannot comprehend the scriptures without the Holy Spirit leading them and directing your thoughts. Ask the Spirit of God to be with you and to, and to open your understanding. You say, God, if you're real... Lord, okay, well, give me this spirit of yours and help me to understand this so-called divine word of yours. And God will deal with you in your ignorance. Because he knows, he knows the philosophies, he knows the education that you have received that have perverted you to such an extent that you would mock at the fact that there could possibly be a God. As if having faith in God, or as if it takes more faith to believe in God than, a, than evolution. Just give God a chance. And for those of you out there that profess that you have a relationship with Jesus, once again, I want to encourage you this evening, as the Sabbath draws on, because this is the preparation day, praise God, I can't wait for the Sabbath rest. I am certainly tired. I want to encourage you out there that um, profess that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Please, spend some more time with the Lord. We have to be ready, ladies and gentlemen, and a, a, pre a readiness, a readiness will come from a daily, purposeful communion with God. Watch, watch, watch. Guard the avenues of your soul. Guard what you see. 
Guard what you're listening to. Guard the words that are coming out of your mouth. Guard what you're reading. Guard the type of music that's coming into your home. Guard the type of music that you're playing in your car. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if it is not, if it is not strengthening your relationship with Christ, don't listen to it. If it is not strengthening your relationship with Christ, don't watch it. If it is not pushing you in this direction of, of, of holiness, or if you're not gaining some information that could be of some use to some other individual that could help them in their predicament, you don't need it. There is a clear line of demarcation